Welcome to part two of the lesson on using rates of change to build tables and graphs. Just as in example one, we're asked to circle the rate of change in each situation and underline the starting value. Then use the given information to complete the table, graph the results, and decide if it would make sense to connect the data points on the graph. So in example two, water is leaking out of a tank at a constant rate of 0 0.5 or 5 tenths of a gallon per minute. The tank initially held 10 gallons of water. So here the rate of change is a leaking rate of 0 0.5 gallons per minute. And the starting value is the amount of water in the tank to begin with, which is 10 gallons of water. Let's also write this out below. So the starting value, again, is the 10 gallons of water in the tank to begin with. Now for the rate of change though, because the water is leaking at a rate of 0 0.5 gallons per water, and this is decreasing the amount of water in the tank, the rate of change is actually negative 0 0.5 gallons per minute. If water was flowing into the tank, this would be a positive rate of change, but because it's leaking out of the tank, we have a negative rate of change. Now looking at the table of values, we'll call the time in minutes the inputs and the amount of water in the tank in gallons the outputs. So for this first row, we want to find the amount of water in the tank at time zero minutes. Well, the time of zero minutes is right before the water starts to leak, and therefore the amount of water in the tank to begin with is a starting value of 10 gallons. So when the input is zero, the output is 10. The next input is time of one minute. Well, after one minute, because the water is leaking at a rate of 0 0.5 gallons per minute, there's 0 0.5 gallons less, or half a gallon less, than there was to begin with. Well, 10 minus 0 0.5, or 10 minus 1 half, is going to give us 9.5, or 9 and a half. So we have 9.5 gallons of water in the tank after one minute. After two minutes, there's going to be half a gallon less than there is after one minute. Well, 9.5 minus 0 0.5 is 9. After three minutes, there's going to be 0 0.5 gallons less than there was after two minutes. Nine minus 0 0.5 is 8.5. So you can probably see the pattern here. As the minutes increase by one, there's going to be 0 0.5 gallons less in the tank than there was the minute before. So after four, so after four minutes, 8.5 minus 0 0.5 is eight. After five minutes, there'd be eight minus 0 0.5 or 7.5 gallons of water in the tank. And then finally, after six minutes, there would be 0 0.5 gallons less than after five minutes. 7.5 minus 0 0.5 is seven. Now that we've completed the table, let's write the inputs and corresponding outputs as ordered pairs. So the first ordered pair here would be 0 comma 10, followed by 1 comma 9.5. Then we have 2 comma 9, 3 comma 8.5. 4 comma 8, 5 comma 7.5, and finally 6 comma 7. Now let's set up the axes on the Cartesian plane. We always find the inputs, or in this case the time of minutes along the horizontal axis, and the outputs along the vertical axis, which in this case would be the amount of water in the tank in gallons. Notice using the table, the time start at 0 and go up to 6, and the amount of water starts at 10 and goes down to 7. So let's get the horizontal axis here and the vertical axis here. Let's label the horizontal axis time in minutes and the vertical axis amount of water in gallons. Let's scale the horizontal axis by ones. So we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Let's scale the vertical axis by twos. So we'll have two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. Now we'll plot the points. The first ordered pair is zero comma ten, which is the vertical intercept. The input is zero, the output is ten. The input is zero here, where we have zero on the horizontal axis. Because the output is ten, we go up ten units to this point here. Next order pair is one comma nine point five. So the input is 1, the output is 9.5, which would be here. 
Again, the input is 1, the output is 9.5. Next order pair is 2, 9. Input of 2, output of 9. Next order pair is 3, 8.5. Input of 3, output of 8.5. Next order pair 4, 8. Input of 4, output of 8. Next we have 5, 7.5. Input of 5, output of 7.5. And finally we have 6, 7. Input of 6, output of 7. Now that we've plotted the data from the table, let's go back up to our question here for a moment. It says, once we've graphed the results, decide if it would make sense to connect the data points on the graph. In this case, it does make sense to connect the points and form a line segment from time equals zero all the way out to time 20 minutes, which is when the tank would be empty. Every point on the line segment would make sense because it indicates a particular time and the amount of water in the tank at that time. So let's go ahead and connect these points. Notice in this case, the horizontal axis does not go out to 20 minutes, but if it did, that would be the end point of this line segment that would make sense in this situation. The tank is full at zero minutes, the tank would be empty after 20 minutes, any point on the line segment, again, doesn't make sense because it indicates at any particular time, exactly how much water would be in the tank. Before we go, let's also write a formula that would give us the amount of water in the tank in gallons after a certain number of minutes. If we let t be equal to the time in minutes and a of t be equal to the amount of water in the tank in gallons, we can say that a of t would be equal to the starting amount of 10 gallons minus 0.5 gallons per minute times the number of minutes, which would be minus 0.5 times t. Where this formula would always give us the amount of water in the tank from the starting time of t equals zero to the time when the tank is empty, which would be after 20 minutes. So this formula would be true in this situation for t greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to 20 minutes. As an example, let's use this formula to determine the amount of water in the tank after six minutes, which you know should be seven gallons. So A of six would be equal to 10 minus 0 0.5 times six, which equals 10 minus three, which does equal seven. We can also verify the tank would be empty after 20 minutes. The amount of water after 20 minutes would be A of 20, which equals 10 minus 0 0.5 times 20, which is equal to 10 minus 10, which does equal zero. So we could have used this formula here to complete the table, but because we recognize the rate of change and the time was increasing by one minute each time, it's much easier to just use the rate of change to find these outputs. I hope you found this helpful.